my research into uh, these lost spirits, that's what a mojo is, um, started about five years ago. I was in the north of England in Stourbridge. And I was giving a talk. And, you know, normally uh, what happens is after a talk, you know, quite a lot of people come down to the front of the stage and uh, a lot of the time people bring things and it's very nice of them and they, they bring me photographs and they bring me audio recordings and other pieces of evidence and uh, I, I've managed to, to collate a, a big library of material from different people. And this chap came up to me and he had a, a large envelope. Um, these photos that he had in the envelope were they were bigger than 8 by 10 they were, they were really big. And he said to me, he, he said, uh, do you want to see a photograph of a spirit? And I said, well, yeah, I'm very interested in this type of thing. So he pulled out the first photograph and I thought, well, you know, this guy's paid a lot of money to have these huge photographs printed. And I thought, you know, this is going to be something special. And the first photograph is just of a door. You see, it's a closed door, uh, just with a blank wall. And he, says, he, he said to me, he said, can you see the spirit? <laughs> and I said, oh, no, I, uh, I can't see the spirit in that photo. It's just a door. And he said to me, he said, you, you look closer. Uh, and I did look closer. And he, he pointed to what looked like a crack, um, a black crack between the wooden surround of the door and the plaster on the wall. And it was at the top of the door frame. So then he got the second photograph out, and that was like a, a side-on, sort of pretty close-up view of this black crack. Now, it just looked like a crack, okay? And he said to me, this is a lost spirit. And it's in this room, and they hear murmurings, and they hear talk, talking. And this alerted this guy, and he staked out the room, and he realized that the spirit was dormant, and it was taking on the shape of this thing that looked like a black crack above the door. So I thought, well, that sounds really strange. I'd never heard of anything like this before. And then he showed me the third photograph, and you could clearly see then that, yes, it did look like a crack for most of its length. And then you could see that uh, part of this blackness was sort of overlapping the edge of the actual door frame, as if it was drooping slightly. And he said to me, he said, that, that is a rare photograph. He said, uh, I call these mojos. And he goes, they're everywhere. And then he showed me another photograph, and you could see that this thing had moved, and it sort of moved along the top edge of the wooden frame of the door, and part of it wasn't sort of in contact with the wall anymore. And you could actually see the join between the piece of wood that made up the top of the surround of the door frame and the wall. And I said to him, you know, I'd never come across this kind of thing before, and um, is it still there? And he said, yes, it's, it's still there, but he tries not to pass underneath the door. And I said to him, why? You know, what, what, what would happen? And he said that these lost spirits um, hang around on the tops of door frames, waiting for somebody to walk through. Because what they want is they want somebody who's under a lot of kind of stress or somebody who's under the influence of alcohol, somebody who's under the influence of drugs, to walk through, and then this mojo would actually drop from the uh, door frame, and it'd go head first, and enter that person's aura, or their astral body, through what he said was their crown chakra. So, uh, you know, I wish I had taken 
copies of these photographs because I realized um, after I started researching the existence of these lost spirits, these mojos, whatever you want to call them, that uh, photographs like this are extremely rare. And if this gentleman sees uh, this film, I'd like him to send me copies of those photos. Now, what is a mojo? Where on earth do these things come from? Well, um, you know the song Eleanor Rigby? Uh, all those lonely people, where do they all come from? Over the years uh, that I've dedicated into researching the spirit world, I've realized that many people die lonely. And they die lonely mainly because they've built barriers, built walls between themselves and other people through bigotry, arrogance. Um, they've lived out of their lower self. Now, what's the difference between the lower self and the higher self? Well, the higher self would be a person who tries always to think of the effects, the effect that they're having on other people and try and be compassionate polite and to try and be good as much as possible and to try and live in harmony with nature and always to be mindful of causing any kind of tension or stress with other people trying to avoid that and that would be somebody who's trying to live out their higher self. Unfortunately, millions, if not billions, of people die, um, and they've lived their lives in their lower self. They have not bothered to read, they've not bothered to research anything about the death experience, even though they must have known that death was inevitable. And these people have died lonely, and they have not fulfilled the dreams that they might have had when they were children. And therefore, their spirit finds it extremely difficult to separate from their physical body, but nonetheless they do separate. And because they really shielded themselves from any kind of spiritual uh, thought, they just allowed themselves to be force-fed by television. And television doesn't have really any serious spiritual information on it whatsoever. The spirits of these people hang around because they think, well, the game is not yet over. You know, um, the spirit is free of the physical body, which in most cases would have been in pretty bad health. And so they discover this new form of freedom as a spirit. However, they realize that um, they're imprisoned in some way because they have no idea of how to move on, go to a higher spiritual plane. And so what they do is they take up residence in places which don't have too much movement of people. Um, they prefer dusty, unclean rooms, and like this man said, they take up residence on door frames. And this is a very common thing, and you, you'll find that there are millions, if not billions, of lost mojo spirits, whatever you want to call them, in every city uh, around the world. Freemasons and the Templars who designed and built the great medieval cathedrals 
and also all of the architects and designers of all of the churches, must have been fully aware that Mojo's liked to take up residence on the flat um, part of a door frame because um, nearly every single church and cathedral in the world has windows and doors which are, which are shaped like that. And the reason that, uh, that, that they're shaped like that is so that the mojo just sort of slides off and cannot actually get a grip on a doorway which is shaped like that. <laughs> Now, in some cultures, these mojo spirits are called sliverers or slivering. Now, where have we heard slithering before? Well, we see it in Harry Potter. Oh. Uh. 